This is the Polish author Maria Dąbrowska. For more than 100 years, her homeland was divided between European empires. But today, Maria is happy. The First World War has ended, and together with it, the old European order has come to an end. Empires, the Russian, Austro-Hungarian, and German, have fallen to pieces. The Great War was a tragedy for the entire world, and the victorious countries, Britain, France, and Italy, are deciding how to prevent another world war in the future. Most of the blame for the war is placed on Germany, and the country is saddled with restrictions and huge fines. Lands are taken away from the Germans. New, independent states are created on the former territories of the losing countries. Poland is the largest of these. The Treaty of Versailles not only gives Poles their long-awaited independence from Russia, Germany and Austria, but they also receive access to the sea. Half a million Germans live in the Gdansk Corridor. The Western countries support an independent Poland, but trouble begins in the East. The Bolsheviks' confidence in their power in Russia is growing, and they are no longer prepared to let Poland go. Dombrovska's husband is fighting in the East under the leadership of Field Marshal Józef Piłsudski. The Red Army is significantly stronger than the Polish army, and the Bolsheviks reach Warsaw. But thanks to a surge in national unity and the military talent of Field Marshal Piłsudski, the Poles are able to defend their right to independence. Maria, like most Poles, wants democracy and the Polish constitution, adopted in March 1921. It limits the power of the head of state and also declares the country a republic. The next year, the war hero, Józef Piłsudski, hands power over to the elected president of Poland, Gabriel Naratowicz. Dąbrowska is happy because Gabriel Naratowicz is the most democratic and liberal of all the candidates. But Polish nationalists are unhappy. Naratowicz is ethnically Lithuanian. They call him the Jewish president and accuse him of not knowing the Polish language. One week after the election, the president is murdered by a Polish nationalist artist. In Europe, nationalism is running rampant. In Italy, Benito Mussolini grabs power. In Berlin, nationalists kill the foreign minister, a liberal politician of Jewish heritage, Walther Rathenau. In the beer halls of Munich, the fiery orator Adolf Hitler is growing in popularity. This is Albert Einstein, the world-famous scientist and author of the theory of relativity. He travels around the world giving lectures and nervously observing what is happening in his home country. Germany is experiencing difficult times. There is hyperinflation in the country. Neighboring countries took large areas of the country's territory. Germans feel humiliated. Patriotically minded people boost Hitler's popularity. In the context of yet another concession in the international arena, they decide to undertake a military coup. At first glance, it is unsuccessful, but Hitler is sentenced to just five years in prison for the attempted coup. In prison, he writes Mein Kampf, and his ideas become only more popular after the unsuccessful coup attempt. After the death of Naratowicz, Poland is going through depression, inflation, and countless elections. A lot of people, Dombrowska among them, asked Piłsudski to return. In May 1926, having secured the support of the military and of war veterans, Piłsudski stages a coup and takes the power. Dombrowska believes the military coup was a necessary measure. National hero Piłsudski becomes the de facto leader of the country. He begins a crackdown on opposition, which ends with the establishment of a detention camp for political prisoners. Dąbrowska is disappointed. Her hopes for a republic have collapsed. Einstein spends less and less time in Germany. He hears the news of Hitler's election win in the United States. 
Einstein is a Jew, and Jews in Germany are beginning to be stripped of their rights. The scientist decides not to return home and starts an active anti-Hitler campaign. In 1934, Hitler becomes the Führer. All of the most important government posts are now unified in the hands of one person and one party. This is the party which dreams of a return of those lands which once belonged to Germany. This is the English writer George Orwell, a convinced leftist and opponent of dictatorships. The 1930s is the era of dictatorships in Europe. Hitler rises to power in Germany, Stalin does the same in the USSR, and Italy sees the ascent of Mussolini. In Spain, the Republican government is resisting the military dictator Franco. Britain and France maintain neutrality. They can't decide what is worse for Europe, fascism or communism. Orwell decides to volunteer for the war. Many communist idealists are fighting on the side of the Republicans, but there is a split in the ranks of Franco's opponents. The USSR and Stalin start helping Republicans. Many people are unhappy with it, and Franco's opponents start fighting each other as well. The war is lost. Orwell returns injured from the war and with a hatred not just of the right, but also of the Stalinists. Orwell writes an article in which he popularizes the phrase totalitarianism and draws parallels between the totalitarian regimes of different countries, the USSR, Franco, Spain, Germany. In Europe, Germany suddenly begins to build up its military capabilities and collect German lands. The first on the list is the Rhine province. Despite the ban, Hitler orders the German army to enter the area. The French do nothing, encouraging Hitler to expand further. Germany annexes Austria. Western Europe, fearing a new world war, begins to engage in a policy of appeasing Hitler. In 1938, the British and the French give a part of Czechoslovakia to Hitler. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain is convinced that he has brought peace to Europe. Poland also participates in the appeasement and receives the Czechian province as a result of the division of Czechoslovakia. Poland has a signed peace agreement with Germany. But already in 1939, Germany begins to make territorial demands on Poland. Poland rejects all of Germany's demands. The situation is heating up. It is clear that it will be practically impossible to avoid a war between Germany and Poland. 